Hello everyone. I am going to begin the experiments for the Thames and Cosmos Easy Electric Circuits Kit. I assembled the circuit that I'm going to use for the first four experiments, but I am going to add or remove certain parts as needed for the different variants. Now, Experiments one and two go together and they're called changing direction. I have the motor assembled. It's fully assembled. And I have a single AA battery in this holder. There are two holders that come with this set. And you would connect the positive and negative jumper wires to the holder. There's no switch. So once I connect this wire to the battery, watch the motor. It spins in a counterclockwise direction and it's spinning pretty slowly too. Now for the second part of this experiment, which you could say is experiment two, I am going to do the following. I added the second battery holder to the first one. They slide and connect together. You can see the connectors here. And I also switched the locations of the wires connecting the positive one on this side of the closer battery holder to me and then the negative one to the on the right of the farther holder. And with everything secured, the motor now turns in a clockwise direction instead of counterclockwise. And also, see changing the direction in which a battery is connected to a motor will change the direction in which it spins, but also having two batteries instead of one will allow the motor to run for a longer period of time than if it just had one battery. The circuit runs twice as long as previously. For experiment three, I have both batteries connected in series instead of parallel like in the previous two experiments. The wires are connected in the following way, and once I connect the negative jumper wire to the end of the battery on the left, the motor will spin clockwise, but it also spins faster than in the previous two experiments because now more power is produced at once when the batteries are connected in series. When they're connected in parallel, there is less power being generated. However, the motor is more efficient and it will use less energy. Now for circuit four, I am going to switch the locations of the jumper wires. And now the motor spins in a counterclockwise direction. Otherwise, it has the same effect. The motor spins twice as fast as in the first two experiments. Here are the diagrams for all four circuits of the first four experiments. And this may give you a better understanding for how the electricity flows in all of them. This is the motor and these are the, the batteries. Experiment five is, will it light up? I have the LED and the resistor wired together, and then they are connected to the red and black jumper wires. You're supposed to wrap the one end of the resistor at least three times around the shorter leg of the LED because its legs are of different lengths. The shorter leg is the one that you wrap the resistor around. 
and then you would connect the wires to the battery. But you can see that the LED does not light up. Why is that? Well, as what this page says, there is not enough voltage for the LED to light up. There's only one and a half volts being produced, and that's not enough for a component like this to operate. I would have to increase the voltage if I want that to happen. Now, LEDs are also light emitting diodes. LEDs let current flow only in one direction. So if you wired it up the wrong way, it won't come on. Experiment six is lighting the way. I have both double A batteries connected together and I am going to connect the black jumper wire to this one right here and watch the LED carefully. It glows. Now there's enough voltage for it to work. That additional one and a half volts makes a big difference in powering the LED. LEDs are very small and compact, so they're useful in many applications such as indicator lights and electronic devices such as computers and radios as well as seg seven segment displays but also in regular lighting because of how bright long lasting and efficient LEDs are and it's important to always use a resistor with a bare LED like this one because the current can actually be too much for it without the resistor and the LED will eventually burn out and cannot be used anymore. Here's what the diagram of this circuit looks like, but here's experiment five. Experiment seven is lights off. Now I have the two batteries connected in parallel. I am going to slide this jumper wire and watch the LED. You'll see that nothing happens. The LED does not come on. Why is that? Well, because the batteries are connected in parallel instead of series, the voltages are not adding up. It's just like in experiment five. There's not enough voltage to light the LED. There's just one and a half volts. And when they're connected in series, they will deliver three volts. Think about a car battery. It has about 12 volts. Well, typical household electrical outlets have a, at least 110 volts. Experiment eight is light switch. I have both batteries connected in series again, and I have the LED and resistor, but now I have this weird looking switch hooked up to the batteries too. Watch what happens when I turn this switch, the red LED comes on. A switch allows you to open and close an electrical circuit. And if you think about it, it's just like how you have switches to turn on devices in your home, such as lights and fans. When I turn the switch up, the LED goes out because now the circuit is broken and it's no longer complete. Current cannot flow through the LED now. Experiment nine is simple generator. I attached this large pink ear to the motor and then connected the LED and resistor to it via the jumper wires. Now, this is tricky to do one-handed, but I'm going to just mount my phone like that and I'm going to turn this wheel and you can see the LED glowing even though there's no batteries attached to the motor. Why is that? Well, turning a motor manually generates electric current. This kind of energy is mechanical energy when you turn something by hand. 
and mechanical energy can be converted into electrical energy to power things such as lights, radios, or clocks. And a lot of emergency devices like radios and flashlights have what is called a dynamo motor, which allows you to crank the device to charge an internal battery, which then produces electricity. And that's very useful if you cannot find any charging stations or electrical outlets where you are. Experiment 10 is conductors. You will see that the LED and resistor are connected, but these two wires are not. That is because we will be using a couple different metallic items to put between these two wires to see whether or not they will conduct electricity and light the LED. Is you will need various item metallic things such as bolts, a screwdriver, metal rods, screws, etc. Right now I'm going to be using scissors, a screwdriver, and a metal ball. First I'm going to do the screwdriver. I'm going to now you have to make sure you actually touch the metal contacts of the wires, not the wires themselves. The LED will light because the screwdriver acts as a wire to carry current through the now complete circuit. Now I'm going to try it with this pair of scissors. I'm going to place the handle of the scissors on one wire and then place the other on one of the blades and look the LED comes on again another complete circuit. It's not perfect but this experiment shows how you can use everyday metal items as conductors of electricity. But the ball bearing look it's metal, so when it makes contact with both metal tab with the metal tabs of both wires, the red LED comes on. Anything that conducts electricity is called a conductor. On the other hand, a non-metallic item is called an insulator. Experiment eleven is insulators. We're going to use the same circuit, but now you'll need various non-metallic items in your home, like paper, fabric, plastic items like Legos, or wooden items like sticks. I have actually the P separator and another block from this kit, but I also have a Lego antenna from a set. And we're going to place the items one by one between the contacts of the two jumper wires here, and the LED does not light. Same case for the separator, no light, and the Lego. Because materials like paper, wood, and plastic do not conduct electricity well, or at least low current and voltage. Now I have learned that they can conduct high amounts of current or voltage. Like if you think about a tree that falls on a wire, an overhead wire, it can actually conduct electricity down to the ground and energize a bit of the ground around it. That's why you're told not to go near fallen trees or anything that is making direct contact with overhead energized wires but items that normally do not conduct electricity are called insulators. Experiment 12 is putting it all together. I have five components in this circuit, which is the most complex of the ones I have done so far. The two batteries, the motor, the switch, the LED, and the resistor, so there's actually six. 
if you would count both batteries, but depending on how good they are, the LED and motor may not work, even with the switch on. But the purpose of this pro experiment is to show both the LED and motor in operation. I'm sorry that I couldn't get them to do that. Here's the diagram for experiment 12 and more information about it. All these components are in series. Experiment 13 is parallel paths. I have the LED and resistor and the motor included in this circuit, but now they are connected in parallel. When I finish the connection, the motor spins and the LED lights. Because the components are wired in parallel, they both receive an equal amount of energy and will operate. Here's the diagram for circuit 13, and here's more information about them. Each component is receiving three volts. The battery current is split up evenly. Experiment 14 is taking a shortcut. Now be aware that you're actually going to be creating what is known as a short circuit. A short circuit is an electrical circuit in which something that was meant to be included in the circuit, such as a light or a motor, is bypassed and instead there's a direct path between the batteries. Now you can see that the motor is connected as is the switch here and I am going to turn the switch on nothing happens because I have created a short circuit and because electricity will always take the shortest path it's going to go right through the switch and back to the batteries now always only leave the switch on for a very very short period of time because short circuits can be very dangerous they can cause fires, electrical shocks, or damage to electrical components. And the battery holders have fuses in them to keep the batteries from overheating, but the fuses could burn out if you leave the switch on long enough. So again, do it just for like maybe a second or two and then turn it off. Got that? Thank you. Experiment 15 is two circuits in one. I am going to connect these jumper wires to the battery holders. First the positive one and then the negative one. You see that I have the switch here and watch the motor. it spins slowly in a clockwise direction. And the switch right now is in the on position. But when I move it to the off position, the motor spins faster. There are actually two circuits combined and turning on the switch bypasses one of the batteries so that only the other one is supplying power to the motor but opening the switch allows both batteries to supply current to the motor. It's almost like a two-speed fan in which you can use a switch or lever to adjust its speed. One setting allows it to go fast, the other allows it to go slow. Now with this circuit you would have to disconnect both switches to ensure that no power is flowing from the batteries. If I only had this wire connected, then the motor will only work on the slower speed because only one battery holder is connected, but turning off the switch stops it altogether because no more current is supplied to the motor. And here's the diagram for this circuit when the switch is on and when the switch is off. In the off position, current flows from both batteries. Experiment 16 
is the first of five projects that use special add-ons included in this kit. The first one is movie Zeotrope. You would roll a black cylinder that has a series of animated pictures of a horse galloping with a person on it together. And then you would put another band which features animated pictures of a dinosaur right inside. Then use special pegs to hold it in place. Then I'm going to connect the battery to the circuit and the cylinder will spin. Now this is very tricky and I can't do this with my phone, but if you were to look through one of the slits in the cylinder, you'll, the pictures will be moving by so quickly that they will appear to be a single animated movie. And that is how movies work in a nutshell. In real life though, there would be thousands of still pictures on a roll of film and then that film will be run through a projector and the pictures will be moving by so quickly, like probably over 20 frames a second, that to your eyes, your brain will blend them so that they look like one single animated movie. How awesome is that? Experiment 17 is Walking Lion. After building this circuit, which has paper cutouts to use as the hair of this lion, you would connect the jumper wires to the battery holders and the lion would walk forward. Now it does not perform as well on carpeted floor as hardwood, but it still moves along and this was very difficult to build, but once you wire it up correctly, it will walk forward. It's possible that if you connect the wires incorrectly, it may walk backward, but hopefully you'll be able to fix it easily. This is the same as circuit three. The basic wiring setup is the same, but the structure is a lot more complex than in Project 3. Roar, here comes a lion right toward you. Experiment 18 is Flapping Bird. I have these cutouts attached to the circuit as bird wings, and then I'm going to connect this wire to the batteries. Look at that. The wings move up and down pretty steadily, just like a flying bird. This is the same as circuit three, the basic wiring setup. But you can see that the gears attached to the motor are used to move the wings up and down. Gears transfer energy from one part of a machine to another. Experiment 19 is electric car. As you can see, I built a model car and included both batteries. And I'm going to turn this switch and watch what happens. The car moves forward slowly. If I turn the switch off, the car stops. The principle to powering the motor is simple, but you have a series of gears attached to the motor that propel the vehicle forward. The front two wheels are non-operational, meaning that they are not, they're not powered but the rear wheels are, it's rear wheel drive, you could say. And it moves slowly so you can 
catch it easily. And if you want, you can just let it ride along a long pathway. And it's probably recommended on a hard surface, like a wooden floor. But make sure there are no obstacles that the car will hit or any areas where it could fall, like downstairs or off a table. But you can also change the wires around so now when you switch the car on it will go backwards instead of forward the last experiment number 20 is optical illusion spinner this project looks a lot more basic than the previous couple ones i built but it will be interesting i'm going to wire the motor and now you have an illusion spinner if you look carefully at the spinning black and white disc long enough it will appear as though you are either going in or out of a tunnel depending on the direction the motor is rotating the lines appear to shrink or grow now i'm going to look at the other desk and you don't really notice anything unusual But if you do, you can let me know. Now the wiring setup is very simple. At the end is some information about the electric motor. Pause if you want to read. Here's more information about electricity. voltage and current overall I would say that this was a fairly nice kit but I did encounter some problems regarding the assembly and disassembly of projects for instance it's extremely difficult to remove the pegs from the projects even when I use the tool, sometimes it might, the sep special separating tool, they can be extremely difficult to use. And I had to use like my mouth. I even tried using soap to lubricate them. It was still, still took a lot of effort. And then lastly, to open the cover with a battery inside. You can't just use the tool like you're supposed to. And I ended up breaking the tabs off of the cover because of that and so i don't know if i would recommend this toy personally i probably would not because you don't want to break any break anything especially if you have to replace a dead battery you might have trouble prying open the container so that you can change it but thank you very much for taking the time to watch the projects and hopefully you learn something from them.